Should you treat your bees for varora mites? Hello, I'm Griffiths, looking to win in Griffith. Here we talk everything, beekeeping, farming, countryside living, now we do reviews as well. Now I'm in the shed, decanting the last bit of syrup from this tank. Chalking it up on the bottom with a pallet truck, and when they got light enough, lift it up, put a bit more slope into it. Draining everything out into this. No, I don't recommend this system. That's new this year. The last, I don't know, six, seven years I've been using that. But it creates so much mess with drips. I thought I'd try and improve things this year with a bit of pipe into there, but it's unbelievably slow. That doesn't work, so we're gonna move to something else next year. Now, all the setup I've used this year, I've mixed with Hive Alive. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, Hive Alive doesn't really work, so all the bees need is sugar setup. They'll be perfectly fine on that. Well, I don't think that is the case. You look at farming, or let's compare beekeeping with farming. Now farming has had a lot of money, a lot of research thrown at it, being the big business that farming is. So when we put sheep out, we use uh, mineral drenches, mineral licks, Ebola says, which is like a, a multivitamin you put down their throat, sits in their stomach for a few months. You give them those multivitamins, trace elements, and all kinds of natural product, like you know, a lot of seaweed stuff is used in farming because they reckon that is really, really good. They enhance a lot of the feed with all that stuff within farming as well. It's not just straight sugar, protein, carbohydrates. The ingredient list is huge because they've worked out that animals do much better with that in the system. Now that is exactly what Hive Life is. So you put in the trace elements, minerals, vitamins, uh, all that type of stuff into the syrup which the bees can use. So I think historically people have been against that going. It's all you need is sugar syrup. I don't think that's the case. I think bees could benefit massively off a bit of supplement in their feed. I think there's a lot of uh, more research to be done into that. If beekeeping was a much bigger industry, uh, we'd be seeing a lot more products on the market. Uh, I think Hive Alive being one of the best on the market, uh, they've made some big claims, and with the trading standards industry in the UK, if that wasn't true, then that would not be on the label. They would have been shut down. So, pretty happy with Hive Alive. And if you're wondering where to buy Hive Alive, we sell it on our website. So that's what we're doing today, but that's not what the video's about. So let's turn that off, just in case I blabble on and I forget that's on. If you're wondering, oh, that's wet, that's not syrup. I'm washing the drums down. Once I fill them, I'm washing them down because my drums are sticky. And at the minute, I'm without a pickup. So I've sold the pickup. I've sold the van, glad to see the pickup going to a fellow beekeeper. So that beekeeping, the Black L200 is no longer here, but that truck is still beekeeping, that's good. And the transit van, uh, that's gonna go to someone starting off a recycling company. Uh, so probably collecting scrap metal, something like that. But glad to see that those trucks are gone and they're being put to good use back into work. Now this is what I'm driving at the minute. It's not my truck, but it is a beast of a vehicle. That is an old Toyota Land Cruiser, but it's an import version called, not Pajero, Prado. It's called the Toyota Prado, which is a Land Cruiser. Land Cruiser Prado. Now that is my dad's truck. I have bought uh, another truck. It's not with me yet. So I've got to borrow a vehicle and I've borrowed my dad's truck. And because this isn't a pickup, I got to keep everything super, super clean. So I put plastic down and these clean drums are going in the back of the truck. So I don't dirty my dad's truck with all sticky setup. Uh, otherwise he'd never let me borrow his car again. So we're set up 
to go out, feed and treat for tomorrow. But back to the point, why or should we treat bees for varora mites? Now for me, it's a simple answer and that is yes. Bees have not had uh, varora mites in the UK or any part of, of the Western world for that much time. There's little to no resistance uh, out there, so bees are not resistant to varora mites. Uh, we'll, cover, we'll go back to that topic at the end, but they've got z pretty much zero resistance to varora mites. Now let's look at what would happen if you don't treat the bees for varora mites. A percentage of them will die, a percentage of them will get very, very poorly, and then they might die, die later on. A percentage of them will just not make it. They won't be, won't be building big nests. They won't be producing a honey crop. They'll just be struggling. And what Varora mites is, is a parasitic mite that feeds off the honeybee, lowers its immune system and eventually killing the hive. Now, Varora mites may not kill the hive directly, but they will indirectly. Once the immune system drops, secondary disease can kick in and that will kill the bees. Now, what's my business? My main business is producing honey and another side of my business is producing nukes to sell. Now, I want a big honey crop. What do I need for a big honey crop? I need big, strong colonies, healthy bees with no disease. So straight away there, there's a strong incentive to treat the bees to get rid of the varora mites because I need those three things. The nukes that I sell, what do I want nukes? I want big, strong nukes, healthy colonies, no disease, and bees that are going to thrive. So when the new owner picks up the nukes, they go home, they put them into full-size hives, and they can rapidly expand into full-size hives and produce a honey crop for them. No, I don't want to sell bees to anyone that has got varora mites on them. I mean, and if you buy nukes of bees off anyone and they are riddled with varora mites, then take the nuke back. Don't pay for it. Bees need to be strong and healthy, especially when you're buying it as a nuke. Now, let's look at farming, and that's where I get a lot of my um, thought of mine from, is look at what farmers are doing. Farmers, they worm their sheep, they worm their cattle, they give them vitamin drenches, they put drops down their back to stop flies laying uh, in their skin. They're really proactive on disease, especially parasitic uh, insects, well not parasitic insects, on, on, but on parasites. So you don't want any kind of lung worm, uh, liver worm. Now the those will kill cows and sheep eventually, so you don't want none of that. So every year you've got to treat, treat your livestock to kill those parasites out of the sheep or cow. They do that because they want healthy livestock, high producing livestock. So if, if we're looking at milk, a cow is not going to produce uh, as much milk from a cow who's got uh, parasites in the stomach compared to a cow that's perfectly healthy without parasites. So livestock do better when they haven't got parasites on them. So that's number one. And number two, I think it's a welfare issue. Now you imagine a honeybee was the size of a dog and you could see the varora mite on its back, all wings chewed up into bits and this Looking at that bee, I tell you what, if you could see that in real time and see, how be, uh, see it uh, as, as you're looking at the dog, that would break your heart seeing you know, how ill and diseased that bee would look and how sad that thing would look. That would break your heart. Now, it's quite easy to go treatment free and not actually see that or relate to that uh, damage because you know, it doesn't really hit you the same way as looking at a dog uh, or a diseased cat would. We've all seen those videos on the internet where a cat is covered in lice and worms and all the furs come off and someone's rescued it and brought it back into good health. At the end of the video, it looks like a normal cat all, you know, fluffed up, uh, nothing wrong with it. And at the start, it was just skin and bones. We've all seen those videos. Now, basically, if you looked at bees the same way, you would not be treatment free if you could see the suffering within the bee. You, you just wouldn't, uh, you know, if, if you were to go treatment-free farming, right, I'm not going to worm my cows, I'm not going to worm my sheep anymore, 
the RSPCA will close you down because your livestock, your cows and sheep will be dying around you in the field and everybody will be phoning up the RSPCA saying that farmer is not looking after his livestock, they are dying in the field. And if that farmer took went to court and said, well, I'm doing treatment free farming, I'm not going to treat my livestock at all, I'm doing it treatment free. They'll shut the farm down. The government, RSPCA, will shut the farm down on welfare issues. But with beekeeping, people, um, I don't know, people think it's a good thing more than anything uh, that, uh, to say, you know, oh, I'm treatment free. Not knowing the suffering uh, within the hive uh, at all. So, you know, f f from the points I've raised there, that's why I treat my bees. And uh, I put my money where my mouth is. I'm in the truck, you know. In there is a big box of Apiva. Over 40 packs of brand new Apiva and some packs from last year, which is still in date. And that's not a couple of hundred quids worth of uh, product. That's, you know, way over a thousand pounds worth of product. And that's cost my business every year. I got to treat my bees every year. It is a cost. Now let's look at why people don't do it. Now I don't want to treat. I don't want the bill of buying all that Apivar or buying all that treatment. I don't want the fuel bill of driving around all my sites putting treatments in. I don't want the bill of driving after eight to 10 weeks driving around all my sites again pulling treatments out. I don't want to do that. As time and money if I could get away without spending it, trust me, I would. I mean, I'd be a lot better off financially wise if I didn't have to treat for varroamites. And that's, that's the truth. It is expensive, takes a lot of time, but my bees are looking really good and that's the main thing for me. And obviously being someone that sells nukes, I can't have poor bees at all. Same with a honey crop. I want a honey crop to sell. So, that's my take on it. Now, I know, I just want to cover this quickly. I know why people go treatment free. When we grow veg at home, I try and grow veg organically or as organically as I possibly can. But the truth is, it's very, very, very hard. And the truth is, say you buy organic food, beef or lamb, they have still been treated with wormers. It's just you've got to go to the vet and they write you a prescription to wormy cows. So there's no such thing really as organic meat because eventually if you don't worm your livestock they will die being organic or not. If you're not organic you can just worm them as you wish. If you're organic you've got to have uh, the vet write you a prescription. That's how that works. Now as a, as a, a human race we don't even grow food treatment free. You try growing one acre of potatoes and not use any chemicals. You try growing just a small garden's worth of fruit and veg and not use chemicals. It is extremely hard. The white fly will come, the caterpillars will come, the butterflies will come, the slugs will come, the worms will come, the birds will come. Everything will come to eat that crop. So it's pretty much next to impossible to feed the earth uh, not treat treatment free. Now the idea of it is good and this comes from a good place. I know they do. They, do, they don't want to put foreign things in the hive because then that would uh, potentially, you know, hurt the bees. That's, that's the idea is, even though it does the opposite. Well, I fully get that. So the way out in the end is to breed Varora resistant bees. Now, 100%, I'm all for that. I don't want to be treating stuff if I don't have to. I don't want the financial bill of treating if I don't have to do it. Now, if bees could fight off Varora mites and that not be a problem, then that is the best way. But let's be realistic. That is not going to happen in my lifetime. Yes, people are breeding. They're not varroa resistant bees, but they're very, they're very clean, clean bees. So any kind of foreign thing on the bees body, the, the bees will clean it off. So they're very, very good at fighting varroa mites. But you look at the level of bees in just the UK alone, how many tens of thousands of colonies there is in the UK. 
say a handful of breeders are breeding varroa resistant bees. That gene pool is nothing that'll go out into the wild countryside of beekeeping and it'll just be diluted down straight away and those bees will not be varroa resistant bees anymore. It just, it wouldn't happen. The wild colonies you've got of black bees about the place, you know, you can't just get rid of all those bees and replace them with this new bee because they're varroa resistant. You know, yes, that is a trait we need to breed uh, and there's a, but we need a lot, lot more research and time and people dedicating their work to solving this problem. But as a bee farmer, me solving the varora issue, that's not my job. It's not my expertise. I wouldn't know where to start. So I've got to do the best that I can to keep strong, healthy colonies of bees, just like what farmers have been doing with their livestock. And we've got to basically wait for the government, the bee unit, the researchers, the laboratories out there, the bee breeders, all these guys need to come together globally because Varora is a global problem. It's not a UK problem. Varora mites is now in Australia. So it's a global problem. The whole world needs to pull together, bring all that expertise together and come out with a solution. It's not up, not us, not up to us bee farmers to fix this. We didn't, so we didn't make this problem. Certainly I didn't. And that is the way out of this situation. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you like this video and you want to watch more of the same kind of content, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I try my best to upload new videos every week. Thanks for watching.